Anything's possible. Let her out. Hey, me too. Let her out? Yeah, let her out. I'll be responsible. Well, she's a killer. No, she's not. And give her your coat. Why me? Because you're perfect. You have a point there. We were looking for some sort of young, hot, sexy guy who kind of would, you know, in his own way think that he should be Buckaroo. When the Hong Kong Cavaliers play, the girls are, you know, screaming and everyone thinks they're screaming for Buckaroo except, except for Perfect Tommy because he really knows that he's really it. Uh, Tommy, can we run around our uh, mic? Can we run around mic? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, run around mic. Billy Idol was hot. That was my concept. Yes, I can be Billy Idol. So I was that delusional. I can be Billy Idol. <laughs> and so I went and dyed my hair. And they flew in this makeup artist from Vanity Fair to put this blue eyeliner on. And, and it, the whole thing started to take a look. Let's rock and roll! He was like... Uh... The guy you thought was just going to break through and become the, the teenage idol, you know, with that bleached blonde hair and that smile and very much about playing his character. Does that mean you're on our side? Are you okay? That's right. <clears throat> oh, man. This thing's a pack of mean wallop, huh? What are y'all looking at? I have one in the jail where Peter Weller has a scene with Ellen Barkin. I wasn't supposed to be in the scene at all. And WD comes up and says, uh, I think I want you in the scene. I go, what do you mean? It's not in the script. He goes, yeah, but I, think, I want to see what would Perfect Tommy do? In the, I go, it's, it's his love scene. He goes, yeah, it'd be funny. I go, I don't know if Peter was going to think it's funny. He goes, let's just try it. And yeah, Peter didn't like it. <laughs> Peter looked around and goes, is that guy going to, Lou's going to be here? And Peter thought it was me. It wasn't me, Peter. <laughs> but Peter got me back when I walked up. And he goes, well, give her your jacket. I didn't know Peter was going to do that. And I go, why? And he goes, because you're perfect. So that's the genius of W.D. Richter. He knew how to set a moment up where the actors weren't prepared for it and then capture something like that. And the movie's like that. One of the most memorable uh, scenes, and this is where W.D. would let us loose. There's this wonderful actor, Matt, older actor. He was like the senior actor on the set, great character actor. And he says in the microphone, he goes, well, I know all of you didn't come here to hear me talk. And I went, you're right. And he looks at me. He takes my microphone and unplugs it. And they left it in the movie. And it's one of the biggest moments that people remember. And it was just an improv moment. Besides, I don't imagine you came here to listen to me talk. You're right. <laughs> Michael Reva just put this watermelon in the middle of the scene. It made no sense. And Jeff Goldblum, he, he's from the Repetition Meisner program, which is where you see everything. And we're walking through the scene, and Jeff goes, uh, what's with the watermelon? <laughs> I mean, not many actors would be that aware. What's with the watermelon? And it's just, it's one of the funniest moments in the movie. Why is there a watermelon there? I'll tell you later. The, the ending of the film in the L.A. River Basin has to be sort of credited to David Beagleman as much as, you know, I don't want to say that, but he felt when the movie ended with So What Big Deal that it lacked a certain epic feeling. And I couldn't say, you're wrong, it's, you know, and, but I didn't have the luxury of imagining anything else because he had his hands on the budget at that point and there wasn't a dime left. So he said, no, I want to do something. I want to shoot something really extravagant and I'll give you the money to do it. And it should be, should have music in it. Six months later, we shot it. I was done with Perfect Tommy. Done. They go, hey, we're doing a final sequence. And I said, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to change it. If you notice in the sequence, my costume changes. I said, I want to do it, but I want to change my costume. They go, that doesn't make any sense. I go, welcome to Buckaroo Banzai. Rarely does an actor get this moment in his career. To make a movie he doesn't understand at all, and it makes him a star. Yeah, that's Buckaroo Banzai.